here with a very lovely, and I really like her, Jennifer Esposito. Yeah. It's so nice to have you. And you've written a new book called Jennifer's Way. And mm -hmm. in it, you talk about the struggles you had mm -hmm. with celiac disease. And before we talk about your particular situation, can you explain what celiac is? Yeah, it's, um, when you have celiac disease, it's first it's an autoimmune disease. It's not an allergy, it's not a fad. It is most certainly an autoimmune disease that basically when you eat gluten, which is found, a uh, natural protein found in wheat, you um, cannot digest it properly and it starts to kill or damage the villi, which are in charge of absorbing nutrients from the food. So basically your body starts to become malnourished. It starts to basically turn on itself. And, and, and obviously there are a whole host of symptoms. I guess, does it depend on the person in terms of the symptoms that he or she exhibits? You know, just before coming here, someone said, please mention skin problems. There are so many people that I hear from all the time that don't, e don't even have gastro, uh, gastro uh, problems. They don't even have those symptoms. Some people um, have, like I said, skin problems, have infertility issues that they don't know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it attacked my nervous system greatly. And, and so what, how did attacks. that manifest itself? For me, it, I mean, it, my first symptom was when I was a child. I was, um, I didn't get, my teeth weren't in correctly, they weren't growing in correctly, I was getting high fevers, sinus infections constantly, and it manifested over the years because the longer it goes without a diagnosis, it becomes to just ravage your, ravage your body. So for me, it started to um, wear on my nervous system. So I started to get severe panic attacks. So not only that, you had sort of a lot of gastrointestinal problems, didn't you? I did, but I have to say, once you have a panic attack, it is, that's it, game changer. I mean, I was almost housebound for a while. Really? Yes. And so even bad. something like a panic attack mm -hmm. can be associated with celiac? Absolutely. And, and that is one of the reasons I wrote this book, because I was searching for so long for answers. And when you take gastro problems, backaches, sinus problems, and a panic attack, a doctor, understandably, is trying to put that in a puzzle and make that make sense. Knowing now what I know about this disease, it makes sense to me because the, the small intestine basically is, is housing the serotonin in your brain and it causes depression if it's not balanced. So this is what was happening to wow. me. Wow, and I know you had a wake up call, Jennifer, where you I actually did. lost a tooth. Yeah, I was on the set of Samantha Who and I was very sick at this time. Um, my skin was yellowing, my uh, skin was peeling off. The amount of moisture I could not get in from topical ingredients. I would have vitamin D, vitamin C, they would tell me everything, nothing was working. Drink tons of water. My knees were giving out like I was drunk. It was really strange and one day on set, and the girls on set knew that I was struggling, and um, one day on set we were doing a scene and a tooth popped out of my mouth. So strange. And I literally said, did my tooth just fall out? And she said, yes, that you're, you're been, ill. That and must I, have been so scary. Frightening, and I have to tell you, infuriating, because this wasn't something that I left. I went to doctor after doctor. I was going to say, and what were you told? I mean, I'm assuming. You're crazy. As a female, we're told we're crazy. It's our hormones. You should take Prozac. You should go get therapy. Or it's this, it's that. It, I was told everything from MS to uh, IBS, everything. Well, we have a doctor here, Dr. Rashini Raj is the gastroenterologist. She's also an assistant professor of medicine at NYU Langone Medical Center. And Dr. Raj, there are an estimated, as I said earlier, three million people in this country who have celiac. But I was shocked that 97% of those people have no idea they have it. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And, and the good news is uh, the medical community is finally recognizing how common this disease is in this country. So it is in our mindset more when we hear patient stories, we're testing for it more. But absolutely, people have this from birth. It often doesn't cause symptoms until later on, and that's one of the reasons why they don't know they have it. But even when you do have symptoms, they can be very vague or nonspecific. It could be something like fatigue, um, some confusion or personality issues. And certainly the GI symptoms can be there, but even those could be attributed to IBS, things like diarrhea or bloating. It's not often that you get a classic, you know, diarrhea, weight loss, nutritional deficiency thing going on. Is it possible to be gluten intolerant but not have celiac? Absolutely. And I think it gets a little confusing because, you know, you talked about celiac is not a fad. 
Gluten sensitivity is something a lot of people are sort of latching onto right now, but that's also a very real condition. When you have true celiac, as Jennifer said, the villi, these are the finger-like projections in your small intestine, are being damaged every time you eat gluten. When you have gluten sensitivity, there is no damage going on to the lining of your small intestine, but you just don't feel well when you have gluten. You can still have bloating, diarrhea, but the inside of your body is looking normal. So those damaged villi, if you will, does mm -hmm. that keep you from absorbing all kinds of nutrients? Yes. and sort of you end up I guess being malnourished. Absolutely so you lose weight for that reason you have low vitamin levels in particular vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin B12 you may have hair loss because you're not absorbing protein as much so it can really affect your entire nutritional state. So what should someone do if, if he or she suspects this might be the cause of why they're not feeling well and by the way I should mention we have a lot of people in our studio audience today who have celiac. Yeah. So I'm sure they probably went through some of the struggles, Jennifer, you went through as well. Mm -hmm. So since so many people don't know, yeah. what should they look for and then what should they do? So many of the common symptoms include the gastrointestinal tract, bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain. But not necessarily, right? Not necessarily. I think the first thing to do is bring it up with your doctor and say, can I be tested? It's a very simple first step, a very simple blood test that checks for certain antibodies that are elevated with celiac disease. And if they are, then you get an endoscopic uh Biopsy, That's right. right. So you your get an of your small intestine. Exactly. So a very thin, flexible tube will be inserted. You're sedated, so you don't you won't feel that. Your doctor can take a tiny little piece of the small intestine, send it to the lab, have it analyzed, and that'll confirm the diagnosis. And I have to point out, you have to be eating gluten to have these tests be accurate. So sometimes people stop gluten on their own, thinking, I'll just see if it makes me feel better, but then the test won't be accurate. So go early to your doctor and just ask or demand to be tested. If I can interject one thing here, I, I, I completely uh, respect everything you're saying, but I have heard of so many people who wind up getting a positive diagnosis after years of a negative diagnosis. Right. So it's it's still, it's it's very So tricky. are you saying, so the diagnosis, the, 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 meaning, the diagnostic meaning technique Meaning the blood work. Needs, right. The blood work sometimes comes back negative and a year later they find out it wasn't negative. I've just heard those stories. Yeah, the test is about, as you said, it's not 100%, about 90%. And that's why that endoscopy, even if the blood test is negative, if you're still not feeling well, mm -hmm. push for that. And, and now be proactive. we be proactive. Yes. We even have a genetic test now that is even more uh, accurate. Right. So right. don't let it, let it go. So yeah. after all these years of feeling just awful, mm -hmm. it must have been such a relief to finally get a diagnosis. I tell you, I was thrilled. I didn't know what it was. And I will say, I was very proactive. I was. I tried different eating, um, macrobiotic. I tried to be vegan. I tried everything. I was very knowledgeable about my health. I had never heard this word before, but whatever it was, I was thrilled because I knew that I was correct. I knew that my body was not lying to me. I knew that it wasn't my mind. I knew I wasn't a woman and I was hormonal. I knew that there was something underlying wrong. And that was a wonderful time. And then I realized how much we still don't know. And that led me down a whole other journey.